This river was poisoned in the 17th century and until this day, the river remains poisonous. This river is so poisonous that if you catch a fish from the river and try to cook it, the fish will never cook. Right now, we are about to go see the Inachalo river and this is the river that is believed that the fishes inside this river cannot be cooked. If you put this fish on the fire, no matter how much pressure you put to the fire, this fish will remain raw. Let us go and see the Inachalo river and I will tell you more about how this river was poisoned. This is Inachalo River located in Igala town of Ida in Kogi state, Nigeria. This river was poisoned in the year 1690 during an intertribal war. And today we are going to learn why this river was poisoned. In fact, we are going to find out why the fishes from this river can never be cooked. No, I will try to find the fish from this river and we are going to cook it. Cook it as long as we can so that we can see if we can finally cook this fish. And if you want to see that, continue watching. How true is this story? What is the breed of this fish and why does it not cook? This is why we are going to this town today. When you come to this town of Ida, you will find out that there is two respected statue in this town and these statues are princes. The two of them were used as sacrifice to save this town and that is why this town exists today. One of them is called Princess Enipi and the other one is called Princess Omodoko. They were all buried alive as a sacrifice to save the people of this town. One of them, which is Princess Omodoko, is the reason why this water is poisoned today. Let me tell you the story, but I will start with Princess Enipi. Princess Enipi is the only child of her father who is the Atta of Ida or you can say the King of Ida. And during the 16th century, there is a very strong empire called Bini Kingdom. The Bini Kingdom has a very large army, making them one of the strongest empire to exist around this time. Around the year 1504, the king of Bini Kingdom is called Oba Isigye and during his reign, there is a prominent chief in Bini Kingdom called Chief Oliha. Chief Oliha is so obsessed with his beautiful wife and will often brag about her loyalty in front of the king and other cabinet members. Chief Oliha bragged so much about his beautiful wife to the extent that other cabinet members became jealous of him. At some point, from around the year 1504 to 1515, Chief Oliha had problem with the king, which is Oba Isigye of Bini Kingdom. The king, looking for a way to get at Chief Oliha, he went for the thing he desired most, which is his wife. The king investigated and found out that the wife of Chief Oliha is so in love with beautiful beads. The king assigned one of his servants to seduce the wife of Chief Oliha with beautiful beads and to make the matter worse, the servant is a cripple. The servant was able to seduce and win the wife of Chief Oliha, who he has always bragged about as a faithful wife. He was able to do this because he offered her expensive royal coral beads. After the servant carried out this mission, he came back to the king and the king kept quiet. Without telling anybody, the king waited for the right time to strike. On a very beautiful day, there was a meeting between the cabinet and Chief Oliha started again bragging about his wife and how faithful she is. That is when the king striked. He called out the crippled servant to tell what he did. Everybody in the cabinet was shocked. Not only that this person is a servant, he is a crippled servant and everybody mocked Chief Oliha for trusting his beautiful wife too much. With that anger, Chief Oliha went home and killed his beautiful wife and with the shame, he decided he would get back at Oba Isige, which is the king of Bini Kingdom. He planned to dethrone the king, knowing fully well that he would not get support from the cabinet members. Chief Oliha made a very different plan and this plan would turn out to be a very deadly one. He went to Ida and informed the Atta of Ida that the king of Bini is planning an offensive in Ida. Being a cabinet member of Bini Kingdom, the Atta of Ida believed him. Knowing fully well that the Igala people and the Bini people has always been in a log ahead, so he wanted to use the power of this information to cause war between the two kingdoms. And he succeeded in doing that because he returned back to Bini and informed the Oba of Bini that the Atta of Ida is planning an offensive in Bini Kingdom. And that worked because in the year 1515, it escalated and the war broke out between the Igala people of Ida and Bini Kingdom. Bini Kingdom having a superior army and they recently bought guns from the Portuguese for the very first time, they were able to defeat the warriors of Ida in the battlefield and they were advancing to wipe out the whole of Ida. The Atta of Ida, being very nervous, he contacted the oracle to know what he can do to save his kingdom from being wiped out by the Benin army. The oracle demanded that the virgin blood from the royal family must be sacrificed to save the kingdom and this means that Princess Inipi, which is the only child of the king, will be sacrificed and the king rejected it. The king pleaded with the oracle to take virgin slaves but the oracle insisted that the virgin must be from the royal family. For complete one week, the king was a very different person. He was in a very bad mood. Princess Inipi noticed the change in her father's mood for more than one week now 
and she tried by herself to find out exactly why her father has been in a bad mood so she found out that the oracle demanded that she as the royal blood will be sacrificed to save the people as an act of bravery princess Enigmi volunteered and said she would come out to be sacrificed so that her people will remain she was buried alongside nine other virgin slaves who would help her in the afterlife after princess Enigmi was sacrificed the oracle assured the people of Ida that they are safe even though the Benin warriors are advancing towards Ida. By the time the Benin warriors arrive Ida, they saw that the whole kingdom is already on fire and they find no reason to go into fire when the kingdom is already on fire, they decided to go back thinking that the fire was real. But the fire was actually caused by the oracle and to the eyes of the Benin warriors they see a kingdom burning down but they didn't know that this fire was caused by the oracle so they had to go back thinking the kingdom is already burnt down. That is how the Igala people of Ida was saved during the Igala Benin War of 1515 to 1516. Now let us talk about the Princess Omadoko and how this Inachalo River was poisoned. While Princess Inigbe was buried in the 16th century, Princess Omadoko was also buried alive in the 17th century and that is in the year 1690 and this is during the Igala and Jukun war. After more than a century that Princess Inigbe was buried to save the people of Igala, another war broke out between the Igala people and the Jukun people. This time around, it's a different king, different fighters and some other allies from different other places. The king, as at this time, consulted the oracle very earlier and it was revealed to him that the princess, which is Omodoko, will be sacrificed in order to save the people of Igala. Princess Omodoko was also buried alive again as a sacrifice to save the people of Igala with nine other virgin slaves. As a strategy to defeat the invading Jukun fighters, they decided to poison the Inachalo River. The main goal was to inflict so much casualties to the Jukun fighters who are invading the kingdom of Ida, knowing very well that the invading forces are going to drink the water when they are coming into the town. With the help of Hausa Malams from Bebeiji, which is in current day Kano, they were able to poison the Inachalo River and this strategy worked. After this river was poisoned, it is believed that the Jukun fighters who were advancing towards Ida who drank this water died they died mysteriously in their numbers because of the Inachalo river so much casualty was inflicted in the invading Jukun forces and this gave the Igala people upper hand in the war and history has it that so many Jukun fighters had to run away for their dear life as for the fishes in the river so many people who live in this community believe that nobody can cook the fish in this river many people have tried cooking the fish in the river and no matter how long you cook the fish it will come out raw according to the people who have been here they believe that the fishes in this river is a very different breed from every other fish you have seen both in the market and in the rivers and they believe that the fish itself cannot be cooked no matter how much time you cook it on fire it will not get done there is another thing they believe they believe if by trying to cook this fish or anything the bone of this fish wound you it will never heal there is nothing you can do it to heal the wound so let's say you're cutting this fish and the bone choke you by mistake that wound will remain there forever and that is because they believe that this fish was poisoned as well other people believe that these are actually not fishes they believe that it is human being and they are part of the fighters from the jukun warriors who were trying to run away when their fellow fighters were dying because they drank this water them themselves were trying to run away and they had to turn to fish to swim away and that is why these fish are here today that is some of the stories that people believe this is the reason why no matter how much time you try to cook the fish it never get done i posted a short story about this river on tiktok and dan philip commented i witnessed an Igbo man that tried it back then in the early 80s he died by just tasting the uncooked fish thank you so much for watching this video if you did enjoy the video please give the video a like if you want to watch more videos like this click the red subscribe button around here in your screen and turn on the bell notification that comes up next so that you'll be the first person to know when i post my next story thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye for now